Well, it goes back 30 years or more. Um, in fact, it preceded my interest in economics. I was drawn into economics because of the, my prior interest in poverty and inequality in Australia, where I come from. But it, it sort of quickly evolved into poverty in the world. Um, I think it was personal experience, but also I, I realized I, I wanted to use technical, my technical abilities or my analytic abilities for something important in, 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 in the world. And, and poverty struck me as um, a good candidate. <laughs>If you go back in the history of, of thinking about poverty, what is, one of the striking things is how important information about the lives of poor people has, has been to informing public action. A, many times, I mean, you think of Charles Booth's efforts to measure poverty in London in, 18, in the 1890s were hugely influential, influential on social policy. In, in recent times, the writings of, of people like Michael Harrington on poverty in America and uh, others, many others, great many others, have helped focus attention and helped mobilize effective policies for fighting poverty. A second reason is that the details of policy, what you actually do on the ground, how you design effective anti-poverty policies, how you assess the implications of economy-wide policy reforms, all these things require data on poor people to understand their lives, to describe how they, how they make, their, make a living, where they live, the demographics of their household, all of these questions inform directly anti-poverty policy. Yes, that is, that is true. Um, what we've learned from the, the data is most of the time when economies grow and expand in the aggregate, poor people do participate in, in the benefits of that growth. They participate in the jobs created and the opportunities for self-employment. So typically it's the case that uh, economic growth benefits poor people. But there are exceptions. And also it's really important to, to recognize that the same rate of growth can produce very different outcomes for poor people depending on the initial conditions in the economy the nature of the growth process, the pattern of growth, the sectoral composition of growth, how much is in agriculture, how much is in non-farm sectors in specific economies. And very importantly, the initial conditions in distribution, in particular how unequal society is initially at the point of, of its growth. This has proved to be very important, not just to how much the poor participate in the growth process, but how much growth you get. I really don't know. Um, it is an ambitious target. Um, I think with the right policies, if, we, if the growth rates we've seen in low-income countries since around 2000, if they can be maintained, hopefully increased, but at least if they can be maintained without an increase in inequality, then it probably is feasible, it looks like it would be feasible to lift about one billion people out of extreme absolute poverty by t within the next 15 years. Um, that is still optimistic. That requires a lot of good policies and also a measure of good luck. If we get a series of global financial crises, if we, uh, climate change, for example, uh, uh, idiosyncratic events in particular countries that could undermine progress, and uh, there are a lot of conditions. But if, if we can, if with a bit of luck and good policies, I think it is feasible.